everybody, and welcome back to Forza Horizon 3. I am here with the Lexus LFA, and this was kind of... The reason I picked this video to run on our Rainforest Sprint was... After the last one I leveled up, got a wheel spin. I wasn't really paying attention to the wheel spin, and then I looked back and I won this car. So I was like, okay, whatever. I don't have to go out and buy a car. Why not run it uh, down the Rainforest Sprint? It's eligible. Starts off at the bottom, well I say bottom, kind of a fifth of the way through uh, S1 class. So yeah, I'm going to build this car up and see what we can get out of it for performance. Uh, the V12 goes in it, I'm not going to put the V12 in. Uh, I'm going to keep the standard engine, we'll get to the top of S1 class, no problem. I'm not going to put the turbos in right yet. The first thing I'm going to do before I even put on the arrows, actually go take a look at the tires because they have been an issue for a lot of cars jumping PI up like massively. Luckily, it doesn't jump the PI up too much. Um, it jumps it up, what, 48 PI? So we still have a nice amount of room to play with uh, to get this car to the top of its class. Now, I don't know, again, I want to try and get some power in this car, a little bit more power, a little less weight, so I think I'm going to go with the 285s on the front because they're relatively respectable, and 325s on the rear. Uh, I don't think we're going to be getting insane amounts of power, so I don't think we're going to need insanely big tires on this car. So yeah, I'm basically just trying to conserve as much PI as possible. I've been doing it with the last couple cars just because I've seen what happens in other builds when you don't have the PI to make your cars powerful enough they kind of seem to struggle quite a lot I am going to put the diff in it while we're here so we can't upgrade the brakes but I am going to upgrade the other uh, handling parts I'm gonna see what this does, it doesn't really add any PI it only adds 48 pounds so I might as well put it in now I could get the car down to 3,000 pounds, because um, if I get it down to 2,700, which would be an ideal weight, but we're only going to have 550 horsepower and 2 PI to play with, so I think I am going to go just with the sport weight reduction, get us down to 3,000 pounds. I don't know if I'm going to put the turbos in or not, uh, I think I might just have a play around and see what we can get for p bits and pieces in here that save us some weight. Uh, I don't think, does this place me? No, that doesn't save us any weight. Uh, air filter should. Uh, 15 horsepower. I wonder what our camshaft would give us. 46. So if I go back and take off this. No, we can't. Okay. Just playing around, seeing what I can do with the PI that I have available. I've already put the exhaust on. Uh, displacement, I can't do that. Uh, did I do valves? Yes, I did. Ignition, of course, puts us up over. I guess this will have to do by the looks of it. Um, yeah. Not bad power to weight ratio, we're just over the 3,000 pound mark, uh, about 400 foot pounds of torque, 622 horsepower, so our power to weight ratio isn't going to be bad. This car will probably have some decent grip, it has decent size tires on it, nice uh, race compound tires. So yeah, we could see this challenging the likes of the Ford uh, SVT Cobra, maybe the NSX. I'm not sure if it will challenge the Ferrari that went out last time or the Mercedes at the top of the table. I just don't know if we're going to have the speed and the acceleration, but this car could surprise me. Alright, we are here at the Rainforest Grand Sprint Circuit to take the Lexus for its runs down the course. There's a little bit of wheel spin off the line, but nothing else really to talk about off the line. It has decent acceleration down here, some nice grip. Uh, we do have the 600 horsepower going through the rear wheels, which again could be a slight issue for sliding and possibly wheel spin through some of the lower speed corners. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem though with this car. Uh, it should have some decent amounts of grip. Now our target time is a 301.21 
five. That was this time set by the Merc. Again, Forza isn't showing it because it was a flagged time. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't actually keep your flag times as being your fastest laps down any course or sprint circuit or scramble circuit or any of the kind of tracks that they have to pick from. Which is kind of unfortunate, like I've said before, but you know, it is what it is. We do have a little bit understeer, but then again, that corner has been known to throw some cars off with understeer. I'm turning in way too soon. This car has quite a bit of grip. A little more than I'm expecting on turn, and actually, I do struggle a little bit with some understeer. That could be just because we have the slightly, uh, I say slightly smaller tires. What were they, like 295 or somewhere around that in the front? Which aren't small at all, but I mean, compared to putting the largest tire, which we could on the front, they are a little bit smaller than what. I would like, but I wanted to make sure that we got the power out of this car and got the weight down that a little bit more. That way we had that more acceleration because it's all well and nice. This course, it's a nice balance between needing to have the grip through the corners, but also you need to be able to have that acceleration. Um, there are lots of acceleration points. It's a very high speed course through these corners. You see we're doing upwards of 120 miles an hour, 130 miles an hour, even 160 down through that corner. Um, through some of these corners, it's a very, very high speed course. But there is also some very slow speed technical corners, like this section here, I'd say it's slow speed, you're doing about 70, 80 miles an hour through some of them, uh, sometimes less. And you need to be able to have that control out of those corners as well, because if you don't, it seems like this course kind of stacks up the slower speed course, so if you mess up on one, you're going to be at a place for the next one or two, and it's really going to throw you off. Now we're doing about 161 miles an hour down that straight towards the chicane, a lot slower than we saw from the likes of the uh, Ferrari that went out last time. It's going to be a relatively quick lap for its opening lap. Uh, it's going to be a 304.3, which puts us, I'm just looking over my times, uh, just above the NSX by not very much, less than a tenth of a second. Um, yeah, we're just underneath the Ford SVT, <coughs> excuse me, Ford SVT Cobra. Um, a couple more, actually, yeah, yeah, we're just under that. So yeah, this car, that was only our opening run. I did push it a little bit in some places that I can, I think I can gain a little bit more time. I'm not sure if we're going to uh, challenge the top of the table, but I think we could move up into possibly third, maybe even second place. Alright, we're here to take the LFA for its second run down the um, Rainforest Grand Sprint Circuit. I definitely think that we can go quicker than our last run. Like I've said in uh, the previous video with the Ferrari, both the Ferrari and the Mercedes on its first runs went relatively low down on the table. Um, their opening runs weren't that impressive. And then they kind of shot back at the end and really pulled it all back and went extremely quickly uh, compared to their first runs. Now if we see a very similar thing from this car, then it would make it go to the top of the table. Because I mean, oh, we're running wide through there. Because um, this car set a 304, the other ones were setting like 308s, 309s on their first runs and then they got up into almost the 3 minute mark. Uh, if a similar trend happens with this car, we can see it going extremely fast. Somehow, I highly doubt it. The reason the Ferrari went not so impressive on its opening run was because it was just a handful. It was hard to control, and I had to use that opening run as basically a judging run to see what I can get away with in the car at what points uh, to try and get the most out of it, really. It was basically like a learning lap, whereas the Mercedes wasn't too hard to drive. I don't really remember why we went kind of slower on the opening run than we did on the others. Um, 
But yeah, I'm hoping that this car will go a little bit quicker than what we saw on its opening run. I didn't really make too many massive mistakes on the opening run. There were a few points, like I said, at the end of the run where I kind of ran wider, pushed the car a little bit more than I probably should. Um, I've already messed up a little bit on this run. Our opening section there across the bridge, I ran extremely wide, and then the quarter after coming down the hill, I kind of, um, I basically got its, the wheels spinning a little bit. I didn't really slide it, but I just got on the power that little bit too much, a little too soon. So, yeah, compromises a little bit, nothing major though. This car does have a tremendous amount of grip. You can chuck it into a lot of these corners with utmost confidence that you're not going to come out sideways or anything like that. It's really the lower speed corners uh, getting on the power that it's going to struggle with. It actually dealt with that section there a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, I think a lot of it's down to your throttle control through some of these corners. You really have to be watching your throttle. We're up to 161 miles an hour again down that straight towards the chicane. We look to almost be on for a similar uh, lap time. I'm just trying to make sure I don't get sliding out of that final corner. Final corner is such a little finicky corner to deal with because if you get in the power too much, you're going to slide. If you don't get on enough, you don't get enough of a drive towards your. Uh, towards the start fin or the finish line, not the start finish line, the just the finish line. We unfortunately didn't go any quicker uh, on that lap. We went uh, 305, the last one was a 304. So unfortunately we didn't go quicker. We were actually, I think, just about a second down in our last lap. Uh, but yeah, we have one final lap to get the LFA to go quicker. Alright, we're here to take the LFA for its final run. This, the final run is always crunch time when you don't get an amazing run on your second lap. If you go quicker on your second lap than you did in your first lap, then you're kind of feeling like, okay, this third run we could go quicker, but if we throw it away, like kind of, if we screw up on it, it's not too big of a deal. Um, our first lap was a relatively quick lap. I'm not saying anything bad about the first lap, but I do want to go quicker. Um, I think it's possible to go quicker, I just need to not push my luck any more than uh, basically the car can handle. Basically. Uh, yeah. And not run wide at that bridge like I did last time. I, last time out I was certain that we were going to end up in the wall uh, here on that bridge. Somehow we managed to get away with it. I think this car, it doesn't really have many problems. It gets slowed down into these corners relatively well. There is a little bit of understeer you have to be aware of. Um, the major, I don't really want to call it a problem because it's not really a problem. It's more of a small hindrance, I guess, is what I'd call it. Uh, the only hindrance, I guess, yeah, that's what I'm going to call it, a hindrance of this car I think is it's a little bit down on power or it's a little bit heavy. Uh, if we could take out like a couple hundred pounds or add in maybe 50, 70 horsepower, I think that we'd be a lot better off. But at the same time I don't want to sacrifice any grip or anything like that. So if we could have the car the way it is now but with a slightly more horsepower or slightly less weight, one of the two. Um, it would be an amazing, an even more amazing car to drive. It would be extremely quick because I am noticing it isn't getting accelerated as quickly as the likes of the Ferrari or some of the other faster cars we've had down here. And it's the fact power to weight ratio is there, but it's just not as high as we saw in the Ferrari that was doing. 170 miles an hour through some of these sections where the LFA gets up to like 160 through some of the faster sections. The thing the LFA has, oh I messed that up a little bit, the thing that the LFA has that the Ferrari didn't is the LFA has the grip. The LFA can carry its corner speed and carry it relatively well. It can keep its momentum up which is where it is getting its lap time from. 
where it's not getting accelerated, carrying the speed through the course is definitely an important aspect. We're up to 162 miles an hour at that time. As I cut through the chicane. Uh, we're on for another similar looking lap by the looks of the times. We might go a little bit quicker. I'm not 100% sure. We're going up towards the line. And it is going to be quicker. Oh, we beat out the Ford Cobra. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is kind of the territory I was expecting the LFA to go uh, in, but I wasn't 100% sure. I wasn't sure how quickly the LFA would go. We beat out the Ford Cobra by a tenth of a second, exactly. Unfortunately, it didn't beat out the Ferrari or the Mercedes. If it would have beat out the Ferrari, I would have been extremely surprised. That Ferrari was a monster. The acceleration of that thing was just insane. And if you could keep it all under control, that's why the Ferrari is so quick down this course. But unfortunately, the LFA didn't go any uh, beat out the Ferrari or the Mercedes, but it does move itself up into third place, which is an impressive feat. But that is going to be it for this video guys. If you liked the video be sure to subscribe and like the video and until next time, goodbye.